Okay, so I call this how to handle the L as opposed to how to handle a loss because I didn't want people to get confused that it's about bereavement and you know the death of somebody you love or something like that. No, no, no. It's about what happens when you lose, when you know you get in a street fight and you get the shit kicked out of you, when you get into a business deal and you get uh, undercut by a competitor. It's about loss failure and how to handle it. And it's important that you learn how to handle it. I did another video about uh, loss, about failure, but this is a little bit different. It's how to carry yourself. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this particular video. Because see, the other day, um, somebody I know, uh, an acquaintance, uh, a guy who I think is a fucking moron, uh, he got the shit kicked out of him, right? And, and for the past week, he's been going on and on about it, you know, like uh, uh, doing this, this consistent pity party. I mean, it's, it's like, like a victory lap, but instead of a victory lap, it's a poor me lap. And he sounds like a fucking pussy, right? And I realized that how you handle a loss is really important. I mean, I mean, how you handle yourself as a man, how you confront a failure, okay? And so that's why I'm going to talk about it right now. Okay, so like in loss, in a loss, you know, a loss in anything, a head-to-head -head competition, you know, in sports or something like that, you know, some project that you're doing or a goal you're seeking or whatever it is, right? You lose, right? And there are basically two phases of it. There's the period before the loss and the period right after the loss, right? Now, why am I making this distinction between before the loss and after the loss? Because you see, the loss in and of itself is not very important, okay? Uh, let me explain. You see, you will lose. You'll lose lots of times. And point of fact, you'll lose consistently and repeatedly before you start to succeed, okay? Loss is a part of life and, and it's, it's the prelude to success. It's the prelude, it's, it's the, the ramp to success, to achievement, okay? If you're not failing, then you're never gonna succeed, okay? Failure, loss, losing, you know, getting the shit kicked out of you, it's perfectly normal. And in and of itself, it does not reflect badly on you. And the reason is very simple. You see, in life, there are guys who are better than you. They are better than you, stronger than you, smarter than you, bigger than you, richer than you, whatever the fuck. There is always somebody better than you, okay? So if you go up against somebody who is better than you and you lose, there's no shame in it, okay? Because it happens to everyone. They might be very good in one area and you might be very good in other areas, a whole bunch of other areas, many more areas. But in this particular area where you're competing, he beats you, right? He, he kicks the shit out of you, either literally or metaphorically, right? There is no shame in that, okay? I just wanna make that really clear up front. Now, before a loss, right? How did you lose? Did you like prepare for the competition for whatever it was? You know, say it's it's like uh, you're gonna go to a track meet, say, just for the sake of argument, and you're gonna go to a track meet and you're gonna run the mile, right? Did you practice? Did you do your best? Did you? Because if you did, and you got to the meet and you put it all on the line, and you lost, well, you know, yeah, of course you're not gonna be happy about it. But if you put everything on the line, I'm talking 100%, I mean, you don't leave just even just a drop of effort behind, right? You just put it all on the table and you lose. Well, man, it, it happens. It happens and, and yeah, of course, it's bitter, but it happens. There's no shame. And I'll tell you something else. See, you know those guys, like, uh, like in like this hypothetical track uh, meet I'm telling you about, you know those guys who are just, you know, they're, they're not athletically very talented, but they work, oh man, they work like dogs, right? You know those guys who like for some track meet or for whatever the hell, they prepare, they, you know, work out, they do everything to be as good as possible for the meet. And then they get to the day of the meet, they run their hearts out, I mean, they give it their all and they come in dead last. You know those guys? Those guys, I'm sure you've met some of them. Maybe, maybe you're one of them, right? Well, you know, the people in the stand might laugh and say, oh, look at that guy, he's last, right? 
but everybody who's worked to get to that meet, everybody who's tried their hardest to be as good as possible for that day, and they saw how that guy, the loser, the last one, you know, he put everything in it. Well, none of them are going to laugh, okay? And you better fucking not laugh either. Because a guy like that, who puts it all in, who just, you know, works out until he's throwing up, you know, who gives his heart to do as well as possible, and he comes in last, there is no shame in that. On the contrary, that's the kind of man you want in the foxhole, okay? Yeah, sure, because he might suck at uh, running the mile or whatever the hell, right? But he's going to be a man that you can respect. Because that kind of attitude of just giving it his all, no matter what, that's going to translate into the rest of his life. Okay? So a man like that, he's a man to be respected. A man who laughs at a man like that, he's somebody to be looked at with contempt. He's somebody, you know, just like a piece of shit. Okay? No different from that piece of shit. You know that guy who's like really talented and he doesn't put much effort and the fucker wins? And then he crows over everybody, right? That guy, and he calls himself a winner and he laughs at the people who were not blessed with the talent, the natural talent or the natural luck that that guy has, right? That guy is an asshole too, right? I mean, you gotta keep perspective here. The winning and the losing are not important, okay? Because in any specific event, you might win or lose, but the man who's consistently pushing and trying to be better He's somebody that you got to respect. He is somebody that you have to admire and strive to be like, okay? You want to be like that guy who just puts it all on the line and he comes in last and he's pissed about it, right? He's pissed about it, but you got to love that son of a bitch because that son of a bitch, he's going to go places. He's going to be somebody, right? Okay, so that's before the loss about how you should act and how you should behave. I mean, like, just putting it all on the line. And if you win or lose, it doesn't matter, right? Now, you lose, right? I mean, the name of this fucking video is how to handle the L, how to handle a loss, right? You lose, you lose, and it's not happy. You're not a happy camper. Okay, so how do you handle it? Well, first of all, you keep your fucking mouth shut, okay? You don't go around whining to people. Because this guy that I know that I started this video about, you know, John Doe, this fucker, you know, is going on and on and on because he got into a street fight, okay? And according to him, he got jumped, okay? And we'll get to that in just a second. And this fucker is going on and on and on about how he got beat up and this and that. And you see, he's trying to get pity out of people. He's trying to up his popularity by going on and on about getting the shit kicked out of him, right? And, and he's saying all kinds of bullshit, but ultimately that's what's going on. He's trying to get people's sympathy, people's pity, because he got the shit kicked out of him. I, I mean, I, I can't understand that attitude, okay? I, I don't understand that attitude. I don't want to understand that attitude, okay? My attitude is, if I lose, I keep my fucking mouth shut about it, okay? If somebody offers me sympathy, I just say, well, thanks very much, and I try to cut it short as quickly as possible, okay? Because you see, I want the loss to hurt me. I want my failure to be gnawing away at me. It's important, and I'm going to explain why. You see, when people pity you and feel sorry for you, and, and like, you know, they come up to you and they like rub your back or you you squeeze your shoulder, right? And like, oh, there, there, you lost, you know, it's okay, you know? And they, and they give you pity and sympathy and all this crap, right? Well, it rubs away that bitterness of loss and you need that bitterness of loss. That, that feeling that eats at your belly that just makes you like, you, you feel like vomit in the back of your throat and you feel like shit and it pisses you off, right? You need that, you know what you need it for. You need it to evaluate what you did wrong. You need that energy, that anger, that, that just bile, that just, that, that, that rage, that inchoate rage of failure so that you have the energy to face the failure and learn from it, okay? Because every failure that you have, you want to be learning from it. You want to be examining it. And I've had plenty of failures. And sometimes I go out of my way to look for failures. 
believe it or not. And I'll explain why. Because see, you only learn from your failures. You never learn from successes. I said it before in the previous video. I say it here again. You never learn from your successes. You only learn from failure. And you will only try to improve when that bile, that anger, that rage at the loss eats at you. If you get all that sympathy, you're going to just like, you know, cruise. You're not going to try to better yourself. You're not going to try to be the best the next time. You see what I'm saying? And that's why it's so important to shrug off sympathy, shrug off all these kind words from these kind people, because they mean well. Okay? They're, they're, they're not trying to undercut you. They're, they're trying to give you sympathy, which is a perfectly natural and normal thing. But you want to shrug it off because you want that bad feeling in your belly to give you the motivation to win the next time. Because that's another thing with a loss, see? Whenever you lose, the second you lose, you have to be planning how you're going to, you know, do the rematch. I mean, you can be knocked out in the middle of the ring, the referee is over you and he's just finished the 10 count and you are knocked out and you have lost the fight. And at that moment, you should be thinking about the fucking rematch. You should be thinking, when is that rematch going to happen? Because you want that rematch. Because that's the way you win. And by winning, you grow, you become better. But you need failure to get to that win. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's the key issue. It's the, the failure gives us the drive and the push and the energy to try again. And it's the win that gives us that confidence, that feeling like we can do more, okay? So you wanna hold on to that anger and bitterness of the loss, and you wanna channel it to improve your performance. Now, this is a very difficult part, which is whenever you lose, you have to look at your failure. I mean, you really look at it coldly, cold-bloodedly, just dissect it. And, and it's a hard thing to do, but you have to dissect your loss and figure out where you failed. You figure out where you failed and what were the things that you didn't do so that the next time you don't repeat them. So that the next time in the rematch, you win. See? Now, a final thing that's very important about a loss. And, and this fellow that I was telling you about who got the shit kicked out of him. See, he was telling the story of how he got the shit kicked out of him, right? He was telling the story and he was telling how he got jumped and that's why he lost this street fight, right? I could tell right away that he was lying. I could tell that he was lying. Never lie about a loss. Never lie about, you know, getting the shit kicked out of you, whether literally or metaphorically. Never lie about a loss. Not to others, not to yourself, certainly, but not to others because other guys will sense when you're lying, okay? I don't know what it is exactly. This guy was, was describing how he was jumped and it all sounded very reasonable, but I knew he was lying. And it wasn't because of my personal animosity towards the guy because this guy that I'm talking about, I don't wanna to refer to him by name because it's pointless, but this guy, I think that he is a complete and utter asshole, just a creep and a dickhead and a cum chugger, literal cum chugger, and he's not gay, amusingly enough. I cannot stand him, okay? But not because of that would I be inclined to disbelieve him. But there was something about how he told the story that I know for a fact that he was lying. It made me think of the other times that, uh, you know, some other guy has told me that how they lost a street fight or something like that. And um, yeah, you could always tell when somebody's lying about a loss. And it's natural. It's natural that you want to sort of like uh, uh, downplay your faults and failures. You know, in a loss, sure, you don't, you don't want to say that, you know, some guy was just a, a better street fighter than you. You don't want to say that, you know, you, you pussied out and when the guy swung at you, you didn't know how to react. Yeah, you, you don't want to show your weaknesses and vulnerabilities. So you might, you know, change the story just a little bit, just a tad, just here and there. Don't. Do not do that. Okay? And I'll explain why. Two reasons. Number one, other guys are going to know that you're lying. And when other guys know that you're lying, they, they look at you and they're like, look at each other and they just say, uh-uh, this guy's a bullshitter, okay? So other men will not respect you. And more importantly than that, you'll start to believe your own brand of bullshit. You'll start to believe the bullshit story that you're telling other people. 
And therefore, you will not be able to identify your failures. You will not be able to see where it is that you went wrong. Because you'll start to believe it, because it's perfectly natural. Because out of shame, because of the loss, you want to like smooth it and sort of like not make it so bad, right? You want to smooth it out a little bit, you know, just, just so that you don't look so bad, right? Because you feel ashamed of the loss. So you start changing the story a little bit and you start repeating the story and soon enough you start to buy your own brand of bullshit. And you know, you could take a polygraph and you'd pass it with flying colors because you've gotten to the point where you believe your own bullshit. It happens all the time. It happens all the time with salespeople, for instance. They sell some product and they know it's bullshit product, that it's a piece of crap, but they tell the story so many times of what a great product it is that they're selling that eventually they believe it, right? Repetition makes you believe whatever it is you're saying, right? Same thing here. So never lie because it will undercut your, your reputation among your peers, but more importantly, it will make you pretend to yourself that the loss wasn't your fault. And see, this is the last part. See, sometimes the people you are up against are just bigger, stronger, better than you. And there's nothing you can do. You can put all the effort in the world and you will lose. And, and that's just life. And it's unfortunate, but you know, shit, it happens. It happens. And, you will probably be in situations at some point where you're the bigger guy. You're the bigger guy, the smarter guy, the guy with more resources, and you'll beat the shit out of somebody, you know, literally or metaphorically, right? So, you know, what comes around goes around karma and all that crap, right? But you see, when you lose, and it wasn't because the other guy was bigger, it was because you didn't give it your all or you made a mistake or whatever. Well, that's going to be very bitter. Okay. Now the part of making a mistake and therefore losing that, that happens to everybody. Okay. Never worry about making a mistake because in, in the heat of battle, in, in, in the moment, sometimes you just make mistakes. Sometimes you get to a position where you don't know exactly what to do and you take, you know, one particular tactic in order to win in this situation and, and it's the wrong tactic and you lose. You made a mistake and that mistake led to your loss. Well, you know, that happens. And you made a mistake, you made a mistake, don't worry about it, okay? It's in the same category as going up against somebody who's better than you, okay? It, it's just happened, okay? You made a mistake, fine. Insofar as mistakes are concerned, in the rematch, don't make the same fucking mistake, right? Right. And that, that's the lesson to be learned there. You made a mistake, you learn from it, you move on, and you don't make that same mistake. The real part that hurts, the one that you're going to find is, is just the worst part, is when you didn't give it your all. That is going to gnaw at you. Now, there was a deal, a project I was doing, and I had to go to this very key meeting, this very, very key meeting on another continent, and I went to this key meeting and I did not prepare. I did not prepare fully. And I got to this meeting and there were some people on my side and there were the other people, the, the, the people on the other side of the conference room table, and I started talking and it was clear that I had not prepared and I lost. Now, not, not specifically, I mean, the situation was salvaged and in the end, it actually had a very, very good ending. But I remember that meeting. It happened, I don't know, five years ago or something like that. I remember that meeting and I feel miserable about it to this day. That meeting, I fucked up. I did not prepare as I should have. I had all the time in the world to prepare. And knowing my abilities and my qualities as a man, I know that if I'd given it my all, I would have just aced that meeting, you know? And certain things happened, uh, bits of luck came my way that in the end, my flubbing that meeting was actually no big deal in the, in the overall scheme of things, right? But I'm telling you, man, to this day, it just weighs on me, my failure there. I fucked it up. I, I just, I fucked it up, you know?
that loss, that failure, I'm never going to get over it. In the scheme of things, it was relatively minor. It was actually minor because like I said, everything worked out for the best, but it could have been better. Okay. Don't let that ever happen to you. When you have to prepare, when you have to go into some competition whatsoever, it may be prepare, go for broke, go for broke because that way you won't have the regret. And that way you won't have to depend on luck because in my case, it was luck that saved the situation, right? But if that luck had not gone my way, I would have been in deep shit. I would have been in serious shit, right? Don't ever allow yourself to be in that position. And if you lose, if you give it your all and you lose and you dissect the loss and you see that in the end, you know, you gave it your best shot with what you knew that was the best you could have done. You made all of the right decisions, but factors beyond your control led to that loss. Well, you try for the rematch. That's your number one priority. And if there can be no rematch, move on. Don't worry about it. No matter how bitter the loss, and it will be bitter, move on. Don't take pity laps because that's pussy, right? But don't let it eat away at you. You made mistakes, I'm sure, but you did the best that you could. And the loss happened and just put it behind you. Don't look back, look forward. Because looking back, there's nothing behind you. Everything in your life is ahead of you.